Okay, I've sent, I've started the stream. You need to go to YouTube. I am. And see if the f there we go. We are. We should be live. There you go. We are live. Welcome to uh, another Sunday night edition of uh, YouTube with uh, Jason and Sage. Um, I'm that big S there for Sage. That's why. That's what that S means. And uh, Jason's over there. Hi, Jason. Hey, folks. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, as always, have technical difficulties. This time, hopefully, it's not our sound. Hopefully, the sound is okay this time. But uh, this time, my camera decided to take a bath. And so we can't... Uh, you can't see me right now, but I'm going to keep working on it while while we talk about this morning or talk about the day. Just want to check if we're actually live. I'm just going to refresh my YouTube page here because it doesn't show. It says waiting for Silverside Sage. Did you click go live in the on the uh, live page? Yeah. So it right now the button is saying end stream. Oh, that's odd because it's not showing live. Well, it's showing live on mine. Let me just check on my phone, see if it's showing live. You know, sometimes it's always delayed for... It's it's delayed for other users, you know? Yeah, guys are saying uh, no video, and it still says waiting for Silverside Sage. Well... Um, so you can see the feed coming from my machine? I can see it coming from my. Uh, I can see it. I can see you in my. Uh, in the YouTube window. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Because that then it should show. It should go live. Just one second. I'm going to live. Yeah, it's not showing. Uh, so let me uh, – it says I can see Jason. Everybody's saying they can see it fine. Okay. So we're we're good. You just can't see me. Uh, no picture of Sage. Yep. So we're <laughs> – Okay. So it is live. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> so we're working the way we're supposed to be right now. So uh, I will explain here. Um, I lost power at my house. We've had uh, between sustained winds of 45 miles an hour tonight, and uh, the winds went to uh, the winds started gusting up to I think 70 miles an hour, and when it hit 70, I lost uh, I lost uh, uh, my ability to uh, uh, broadcast. So I am actually running off battery on my computer. And I'm using my uh, uh, jetpack, uh, and so I'm doing this. I might try using my Skype on my phone, which I have set up, and maybe join this call using my phone. But uh, yeah, this is like every week, nothing happens perfectly at the beginning, and then we kind of figure it out. But we're gonna let uh, we're gonna let uh, Jason talk a little bit. So what's been going on, Jason? You got a couple pictures. You got some snow. Yeah, I got snow here for sure. A little bit of snow here. You know what's funny is uh, my my phone still says waiting for the stream to start, and I've had a couple of people text me saying that they can't get into the stream, um, which is kind of well, odd. I, I mean, I I'm seeing it here, and there's guys, you know, guys in the chat are all seeing it, so yeah. something's going right. But uh, wind's crazy at Dennis Matthews' place in Shorts Creek. Yeah, that's a little south of us. That's near Flint. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Richard's saying I look better than ever tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's um, the winds are pretty wild here. It's uh, been kind of wet, slushy snows all, all day. It, uh, the sun popped out for about 20 minutes, half an hour at uh, lunchtime, and then it's just been wet, slushy snow since then with some pretty sideways winds. So it's like winter came in with a vengeance. So, uh... oh, John, What's John, that? Um, YouTube apparently is showing that there's two different live streams. Okay. Let me go to your page and see if there's something funky going on. 
I, I can tell you a lot of people are seeing it. This is yeah. the, the link that I've been sending out to people. Maybe huh. the original link that we uh, we broadcast is not. Oh, running. there we go. Just came up now. Yeah, it just, if you ever notice that, YouTube Live works kind of weird. It doesn't, it's not like it comes up right away. And, uh, you know, that's just, I, I've been learning that YouTube's not exactly, uh, um, you know, it's not exactly perfect when it comes to getting these things started. Yeah, I'm just glad to say it's not our issue this this week. It's YouTube's problem, not ours. So... So yeah, um, I can get while you're working on your video there. I, I can give the guys an update on what I did this week. Um, I managed to get my bus license, so she's officially sworn in as a citizen, and uh, took her for a good drive yesterday. Um, driving a vintage bus, as you know, never goes without a hiccup, and uh, so I had a problem where I'd been driving it for a while on the front tank coming home, and when I got home. I flipped it to the rear tank because I wanted to check to make sure that the rear tank would feed properly and uh, everything would go well with that. So I, I waited until I got back before I played with that changeover valve because Scott Grease Monkey and a few other people have all told us if it's working, leave it alone, don't play with it because chances are you're going to have to rebuild that valve. So first thing I did when I got that bus home and in my driveway is I flipped the valve, fired it up, and ran it for a while to make sure it would feed off the rear tank. Everything all seemed well. If you remember, we filled up both tanks. Um, probably the first stop we did. Uh, so I knew the tank was full. I had been driving it around here. I probably did about, I don't know, 150 miles, 180 miles locally here. Oh, I got to bring you back in, it looks like. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> I got a missed call from you. Um, okay, okay. Here, let me, uh, I'll join in. Okay, so there I am. There, it looks like we've got... Oh, i got to readjust your window size. we got a tiny little Sage. we got Sage, but we got to readjust his size. Here, let's bring him in so everybody can see him. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I, ch I changed over that valve, and I'd been driving around. Everything seemed like it was working well until I filled up the tanks again. I decided I, I, I'd done a bit of driving here and I wanted to I wanted to check my mileage from the trip from Michigan and I wanted to fill up the rear tank because I, I didn't know how much fuel was in it after I've been driving around because there's no gauges in these old buses so filled up both the tanks drove it home everything seemed fine picked up my wife took her for a drive to Stratford and I get back and I got fuel dripping out the rear tank so it was feeding from the rear tank and dumping the overflow into the rear tank so feeding one returning to the other um, overfilled the rear tank because I had already just filled it. At first I thought, well, I went over a curb. I kind of pulled a sage there and ran over something. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought, okay, I just sloshed around the fuel in the tank and it was right full and it came leaking out the one side. So I thought, oh, I'll go drive it a little bit further. So I drove it a little bit, I don't know, maybe another 20 miles to burn off some fuel, pull over, and it's still dripping out the... Uh, fuel cap and scratch my head going this isn't right so i f realized at that point it was warm diesel that was coming out the top so i went to the fuel valve i flipped the valve to the front tank again and it stopped overflowing and everything was good so i uh, figured out what the issue was got it home cleaned out the valve and uh it seems to be working now so i don't know what it was doing but it's uh seemed to be resolved now so that's my update well, for the week I'm, I'm flipping the camera around a little bit I'm going to put it on a tripod on my phone. Okay. So uh, has that been it? I So to be honest, this week has been so crummy weather-wise here. I haven't had really a chance at all to get to, to looking at my bus. Uh, the next three days, though, I had it ready to show you. But it's going to be in the 60s, 65, 68 for uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday where I live. And so you know that I'm going to have all kinds of video. I'm going to go in and, and look. I, I feel reluctant to pull that water manifold out or do any of that, um, you know, with, with the weather going back down. And essentially, I, I'm at a point where I've identified some property. Um, and it, as luck may have it, uh, the neighbor across the street from uh, the place that I, I do a lot of work they just bought the property and there is a huge pole barn that they want to sell 
it has to be taken apart and then moved. Um, but it is a really, really nice building. It would fit the property I'm looking at perfectly. Um, and so, I mean, that would be ambitious to buy a, a property, piece of land, um, you know, put in the sewer and the water and the electric uh, on a slab and then have this building dismantled and have it reassembled at the other location. I've got to compare my costs to see if it's cheaper to just build a pole barn than try to take one apart and move it and put it back together. So that'll be interesting to see which uh, which way would be the cheaper way. But the building's perfect. It, I mean, it would fit. It's the exact footprint that I would build. Um, it's just, is it cheaper to, to have a, a crew take a building apart, move it three miles and put it back together? Or is it cheaper to just buy materials and start over? Okay, I think I figured out what's going on here. You actually have two live streams started. So there's a bunch of people in the other one that aren't seeing us. You need to go find the uh -huh. other one and end it because they're just sitting there waiting for us. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I'll go. I'll go take a look. But yeah, uh, you've got two links. I just went to your YouTube page, and some, for some reason, YouTube created a new one when we went live. So the link that we sent out to everybody is not working. Oh, you know why? Because I gave you that. Uh, I gave you that link to the. Uh... Man, we're figuring out how to break this in in cooler ways than anybody's ever imagined. Yeah, I can't figure out how to do that. I, I all I have are my uploads. I can't figure out how to locate live. Uh... If you go to, if you've got the page open for your live, there should be a list of all your. No, I got, I've got, I've got my Silverside Sage page open to videos, and there's no lives in here. Hmm. I don't know. I, so I don't know how to find. Oh, is this? This one says live now, but it's the old one. No, this is this is an older I one. Yeah, so I've got the one that we have open, and it's actually one from a couple of days ago. But the new current one doesn't it doesn't show up. I don't see it anywhere. Huh. Weird. So my my guess is let's just kind of keep doing with what we're doing and and hopefully people will figure out what's going on. But I, I, I have no idea. This is that code I sent you. Yeah. The code that I sent you is actually from a video from a couple of weeks ago. Strange. So it's actually showing up as us reopening one of the older videos. Huh. That's really strange. So I don't know how we keep doing this stuff. We do some pretty cool stuff, but this one's, uh, this is another one of those. I, I don't know how we did it, but let's just not worry about it. Yeah, it looks like the other one's gone obvious. now. So it looks like everybody's coming over to the new stream. So I don't know how we ended up with two yeah, streams. Yeah, they're probably but... notified. They're probably getting notified that that this one's live. Yeah, that was that's really strange. So, uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Uh, I finally found the page, um, and it's actually your link. That's why, Jason, it's coming from you. Found the page. So anyway, so what what else is going on? And it's actually. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that. Uh, oh, weird. I mean, you also got some good news on the home front. Do you want to talk about it this week? Uh, I found some work. I got a new consulting gig coming up. Um, that starts tomorrow. Um, some people may or may not know I was out of work for a little bit this summer, and that's how I was able to travel with Sage, and we were able to do these bus rescues. But. Uh, I've got some new work lined up, uh, some consulting work, and that starts tomorrow. So you're, is it going to give you no time to get your uh, bus done? Did you tell them, hey, I know this job's important, but, uh, you know, I've got this bus I got to put together. So, you, you know, I can't work that hard. <laughs> is that what you said in the interview? No, unfortunately, uh, the job takes priority over the bus. So I've got to try and manage both um <laughs> but uh yeah it looks like there's still 15 people over at the old stream that haven't come over yet but it looks like most of the people are coming over yeah um, don't don't worry about it i'm i just put an i posted an update with the link okay perfect 
Yeah, I just put the link up and just said that I had a power failure. So let's not worry about those okay. guys. If they can't figure it out, they don't deserve our content. Oh, everybody <laughs> deserves our content. Come on. I know. But uh, so, so you got a new game. Yeah, this got a new great. game starting tomorrow. Got to manage both. I want to get the bus buttoned up at least enough that we can use it come springtime. So it's it's going to be a bit of a juggle to try and get the bus uh, get it done for spring. But that's the goal. Um, with the new consulting job, I'm able to do some work on the road, which is great. So I can do what we'd plan to do and travel on the bus. So good. So you're going to work on your interior, right? Yeah. So the first thing I got to do is I got to get the bus weather tight before I can put any interior in it. So I've held off on anything to do with the interior because um, got to get the window gaskets done. So looks like we lost your video there. No, we're okay. I'm okay. just getting a tripod. Oh, okay. So someone has graciously offered to put my bus inside for the winter, and it's going to be a wonderful spot that's going to be a little bit warmer so I can actually continue to work on it over the winter. So I have to thank our good friend John for that. Um, it's going to be parked next to the renter bus, which is great. So I'll be seeing a lot more of the renter bus, and that'll give me some time to look over the renter bus more and maybe get some inspiration. Oh, really? So you're going to be in the same uh, same place as him? Yeah, there it looks a little dark and spooky over there. Halloween was yesterday, well, eh? I mean, I'll, I'll show you what we got. <laughs> so behind me, see if you can see it. Can you see my fireplace? I got a fire going. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just trying to figure out a way to do lighting. I did set up a tripod now so that I can... Uh, I can kind of look at stuff without my hands. So in case you're just joining us, uh, we, we all had plans to start the video here in uh, like normal, but uh, I had a tree, I think, fall down a couple blocks from me. And so as a result, I'm uh, without power and I'm running off my phone. Jason's running from his normal facility. And so he's able to... Uh, to kind of keep things going while while we do that. I just threw my camera on a tripod. So here I can adjust it up a little bit so you see my head. So I look a little weird and I've got a fire going on behind me over my shoulder, but that's about that's about the best we can do tonight. Yeah, maybe I'll give a quick little so, recap on uh, what I was up to this week because a lot of people came in from the other stream. I'll just do a quick little recap sure. for, for the viewers. So I got my bus licensed, got it... Uh, Plated properly, so now I can actually drive it around again, which is great. Took it for a drive. I had a problem with my fuel valve, where the fuel valve was uh, feeding from the front tank and returning to the rear tank. And uh, I didn't know this, and I took it to the gas station, topped it up with diesel, filled, topped up both tanks so I could check my mileage. Drove a little bit, and it starts leaking out the uh, rear tank. So <laughs> I figured it out because it was warm diesel coming out, so I knew it had been through the engine. And uh, I just fiddled with the valve and flipped it back to the front tank, got it got it working right, took it home, cleaned out the valve, and everything seems to be good now. So uh, there are two things that I got done this week. One, um, for those of us who live near Harbor Freight, um, I'm a, one of those VIP members. Here, I got, I got show and tell. Look what I picked up today. Oh, is that battery operated? This would be a battery operated Zerk gun. And uh -huh. uh, I'll tell you why this is so important. On a Silver Sides bus, we have, what, 44 uh, Zerk points? I can't remember, but there's and, a huge uh, chart that shows you where they all are. I, I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 40. And so there's a lot of places where you have to grease. I mean... We, I greased for probably half an hour under the bus and I ended up screwing my arm up as a result of, of greasing. So Jason, of course, has his bus when we were in uh, Minnesota and he, of course, is, is working at the, at the uh, bus boys uh, garage where Phil works out of and, and uh, all of those guys. And they have a battery operated grease gun. And I'm like, oh man, how lazy can you be until you start realizing how much you know, how much grease you need to actually put in these things. And so as a result, um, they had a battery operated one and that thing worked slick, didn't it? Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, it, you buggered up your arm lane underneath the bus in Texas. Yeah. 
So this thing is, uh, it fits the same battery as some of my other other equipment. So you just throw throw the regular battery in. It's got a, it's got a clip, you know, so you can just clip it right on. And uh, man, you just, it's just like a machine gun. You just pull the trigger and it, it greases wherever you go. So that'll be fun. Cause I, you know, have two buses that's 80 certs. I could grease both my buses, probably take a couple tubes of grease to do it, but I won't get exhausted in the process. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. So the other, uh, the other show this week is I picked up, well, I ordered these actually in August, but they showed up and uh, I'll show you what they are. I'll give you a, a big hint. I bought myself some seatbelts. Oh. So um, I, didn't, I didn't think seatbelts would be easy to, I didn't think they would be hard to find. They're really hard to find. So you got right an now. inertia reel and everything. I found, yeah, it's got a, it, yep. So it'll, it's got the, you know, the little extension thing that comes in. So uh, I'm excited that they came in because guess what? I was told we're under uh, two weeks now for me to go get my other bus. Uh, oh, the, cool. the, uh, the 1941 pre-war, uh, they basically uh, have gotten done with harvest. And I asked Chris, you know, I need a realistic date. And he gave me a realistic date that I could show up and the bus would be, springs would be on, everything would be back together. And, uh, and you know, everything would be dialed in. So um, I've got it on my calendar. I'm gonna make a run down to Indy and we'll figure out probably rent a one-way like a rental car just drive down because they're near the airport and uh i will uh i'll drive it up and then tyler promised whatever day i, I bring it home he'd be available you know on call if i had a breakdown which that bus was rock solid for the 300 miles we came back from belpre um you know we didn't have really any problems brake lights work on it headlights work on it if i leave at seven o'clock eight o'clock in the morning i'll be home uh, you know, on a Saturday, I'll be home, no problem. And uh, and so hopefully I'll have both buses home by then. Cool. So all I need now is to find a, uh, all I need now is to find a, a bus or a, a place to store it like you, some heated storage to get things done. How far away is John from your house? Uh, he's a bit over an hour, so it's not too bad. Like I, I can plan for a day to go down and work on it when I need to and uh, give John a hand with some stuff on his bus that he needs and I mean, I could make a weekend out of it every couple of weeks if I wanted to. There's lots to do, that's for sure. Um, just reading through the chat here. Um, Dennis is saying, uh, was it Dennis? Somebody's asking me if my shirt says pilot for the pilot gas stations, but no, it actually says I'm a pilot. Frightening, isn't it? Yeah, you you fly. Yep. Um, that's a... That, that is... I, I'm with him. I... <laughs> I'm happy that you've never uh, forgotten to put the landing gear down or things like that, but uh, it's a whole, it's, I mean, you really have to have a level of concentration when you're flying. I mean, I suppose driving a bus is not much different. You really have to be on your game when you're driving a bus because you've got, you know, reaction is different, right? You, I'm sure you can hit your brakes, but you know, you got a lot going on with the shifting and the, uh, you know, it, to me, driving a bus, which is so much wider than a car, um, you know, you really have to pay attention to where you are in your lane a lot more. Um, flying, of course, it's hard to, to hit a car when you're flying in a plane. And it's it's probably pretty hard to hit another plane. But, uh, uh, you you know, would think so, track. but you, you, if you think about it, all the airplanes converge into one place. They are all going to airports, so it's not as hard to hit another plane as you might think. Well, so in landing, of course, you know, that's what I always got. You You have to be like... All lined up at the perfect time when you when you hit the ground, you know how do you know exactly where the ground is? I mean, you're going to get close, but it's it's all you know, perspective you, and you, training, and you learn it and you learn it over again when you do it wrong, and the instructor takes over and says, "Don't do that." <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a great hobby. Anybody who's interested or keen, I, I I highly recommend you go find a local airport and go for a a, a intro flight. It's it's amazing my only regret in aviation is that i waited till i was almost 40 to get involved so if anybody wants so to do I'm it flying, 
I'm blind as a bat. At the best, they could crack my eyes to 2040. I'm not. I can't ever achieve 2020 vision, and that's yeah. been like that since I was two. So is that you need to have good corrected vision to 2020, don't you? It doesn't have to be to 2020. I can't remember what the spec is. Um, it doesn't have to be 2020 corrected, but uh, yeah, I. And I think the U.S. spec is different than the Canadian um, because you've got a different class of medical now. It, it, it's changed a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it, 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 if it's something you're concerned about, then you, you want to go do your medical before you get too far into your flight training to make sure you're going to be able to pass a medical. Um, but it, it's not overly difficult to get a medical if you're in reasonably good health and you don't have any major issues. So if not probably 99 out of 100 people, it, it's not a problem for. And... Uh, as I said, if you're interested, then, then just go do it. Um, next time you come up here, Sage, if you get across the border, if this COVID stuff ever slows up, you have to come for a flight and we'll take some video. Well, that brings up a pretty good point is that, uh, you know, in our, and we don't talk a whole lot about COVID, but but this week, since I spoke with you last, um, we have had more cases of COVID in the last two weeks in our in our community than we've had during the rest of the entire pandemic. So we're having a, uh, we're having a pretty, uh, I mean, we had 47 cases, I guess, on Friday, which um, it was almost double our previous record. So we've got a lot going on right now. We're above 5%, which, you know, that's the percentage. New York, for example, New York City is under 1.7. It's 0.9% in New York City, and we're at 5% here of you know active cases in the community and so that's uh you know that's not good um and so like the schools tomorrow um our schools everybody's in uh, video and staying home because there's been some spread cases in the schools and stuff like that so we're starting to really hit it new york um you know my my wife we we also have a place in new york my wife lives there right now um they are going to a point where Michigan used to be able to come and go into New York without any problems. I have to go in and quarantine. I have to actually arrive to the state of New York with a slip of paper saying I just had a COVID test and I'm and I'm I don't have COVID. Wow. And that's something that they do with with states that are having big problems. And we're one of the states that are having one of those problems. We don't really know what it is. If it's a kid's going back to school, you know, if it's Wisconsin, which had a big problem. And it kind of worked its way this way. Um, we really don't know why, you know, a lot of places here are having so many problems, but we're definitely having some right now. Yeah. So you guys have had a little bit of an increase there, but it's not that bad. Yeah, we've had an increase. Like we're having a second wave up here, like I mentioned last week, but it's certainly nothing that most of the U.S. is seeing. Um, our second wave is definitely stronger than our first wave, but watching the death rate, um, it's much lower this time. I think the hospitals are more prepared and they, they know how to deal with it better this time, but that's not to say it's right. not an issue. Um, just reading through the comments here. Um, Dennis is wondering if your springs are the right arch because of the problem Scott had. And I think the problem Scott had was because no. he had so much weight. I, uh, so that's, I saw that and immediately I began to be concerned that, uh, um, that you know, I'm going to get on the road. I've got four new springs, and that they're not going to be, uh, you know, bent the right way, or they underestimated. I've, I've been thinking about calling the company um, and the guys who built mine, and just say, look, based on what you know, what happened with Scott, am I going to have problems? I, I do think it's weight. I mean, Scott, he said even after taking out a bunch of stuff, he was still running even heavier than he normally does. And so I, I'm, I'm almost wondering if his, his old springs that he pulled out failed simply because he was putting so much more weight in his bus than normal. But, but I don't know. I mean, the reality is I'll certainly find out. I mean, the truth is I had one spring that needed to be fixed, and I decided to replace them all. And uh, I'm keeping, of course, the other ones. I'm, the one that I loaned to, to Scott, I'm going to get back from him. Um, and so I... Uh, you know, I'll see, I'll see. And I mean, God, I hate to think that I, I need to go put my rear springs back on because the new ones aren't. But uh, if it's just adding leaves, that's something that can be done up here pretty easily. I mean, it's not simple, but it's easier than replacing the entire spring um, to add a leaf. And I think that's all Scott did was put some leaves in. He didn't, 
Did he have? Yeah, two? he. I think he replaced the top leaf and added two as well. So he he changed one leaf and added two more. And uh, if you consider what Scott's weighing in at compared to what your bus or what my bus weighs, he's carrying a lot of weight. I think he's around 27,000 pounds, if I'm not mistaken, whereas I'm 21,000, you're 21 and a half. That's a big difference. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I was just looking at more questions and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I'm so, just um, back to see if we missed anything. No, I mean, you know, mostly just response to the, the COVID stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so uh, so this week, hopefully, um, you know, I will have uh, uh, three full good days working on my bus. I'll definitely fire it up, drive it around. Um, you know, I have the clock's ticking on that water manifold with the JV Weld on it. <laughs> and once we get that fixed, um, you know, then it'll be fine. But I, I'm not going to, in three days, I'm not going to pull the water manifold off. That's going to probably be something that'll have to wait for the spring. I've decided that uh, I, I do have one possibility of parking the bus inside this winter. Oh, that'd um, be nice. Rent's going to be a little bit higher. We're in a, you know, our area, we've got tons of water. So boats are always, people on boats are always looking for indoor storage. So it is a premium here. Um, but uh, I may have an opportunity with uh, a friend of mine as I'm waiting to get mine put together. Uh, but, uh, you know, Corey, you met Corey, the guy where I'm storing right now. He's really mm -hmm. cool. He, we work, we came to terms and basically I can park my buses and it's, it's reasonable and stuff like that while I'm waiting. As a matter of oh, fact, good. the property I'm, property I'm looking at is directly across the street from that building. Um, yeah. Remember we were talking about the, that, those lots that were for sale? Yeah. Um, they, they, I talked to the guy, he'll divide one off to one acre, which is about what I need. So, oh, that's cool. I got, yeah. I got, I was going to say, I got one thing What's for that? show and show and tell here. I just pulled out of the box. So this came to me this week. Oh, where'd you get that? <laughs> well, a very kind friend found it on eBay and bought it. And not only did he buy it, but uh, he flew it into the local airport and brought it to me. So no kidding. Yeah, so I'm pretty pretty stoked about getting that. It needs a little bit of repair on the on the on the rim here, but otherwise it's actually in pretty good shape. And uh, it was it right on your head, man. Let's see it on your. Well, head. I'll wait. I don't want to do any more damage to it until I get it fixed. So, but uh, it's actually you won't be able to read it, but it's actually got the name of the driver that it belonged to on the inside of the hat. And uh, the driver was out of London, Ontario. And uh, it's pretty cool. Wow. So it's... That's even cooler that it's a Canadian creator. Yeah, so I don't know the exact vintage. Um, maybe if any of our viewers are Greyhound experts, maybe they know a little more about these hats and can give me a little more information. But uh, I'd like to research it and figure out exactly what vintage it is. And I, it's... It's pretty cool. It's a nice piece to have, and uh, it'll it'll go well in my bus. So I got to thank John for getting that to me. Yeah, that's uh oh, John's the one who picked it up for you. Yeah. Wow. So John, you know, you watch these a lot. You know, I'm a seven and three eighths, if, or seven and three quarters is my hat size. Just saying, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, it was a good day. John brought me the hat, and he let me go out for a flight in one of his airplanes, and it was a good time. Well, cool. Well, let me uh, – are you watching the questions? Yeah, I'm just going to look here. Um, yeah, somebody was asking if my springs came from – I referred the spring shop to Scott. So, yeah, my springs were made at the same place that Scott's was made. And, again, they – are used to doing uh, like 50s and 60s cars, like, you know, vintage cars that need springs to be built. They're really accustomed to that. They took this on because um, they they could do the engineering. And they're actually, you know, they really like the challenge of coming together with uh, putting a bus together and, uh, you know, to see it sag worse, but then see how quickly they could resolve it was pretty good that, you know, they, they knew how to fix it pretty quick. Yeah. So, um even if there is some adjustment that's needed, I'm, I'm confident that we'll get it fixed pretty quick. Yeah, it'd be so, interesting uh, to see, see 
how the bus, how the springs are on your pre-war versus Scott's bus. I, I'm going to wager a bet, and I'm going to say they're probably going to be okay. So somebody said it's about twenty or a thousand dollars Canadian to park uh, a twenty-foot bus inside during winter where this this one guy's located. About a thousand bucks. I think it depends a lot on the area you're in. Like if you're somewhere close to Toronto, it's going to be expensive. If you're somewhere close to cottage country or trailer parks. It's going to be more money but if you're kind of out in the sticks a little bit further away it, it's not going to be as much money and it, it it all depends on what you're looking for too there's a lot of farmers that have barns where they store stuff but if you're looking for um heated storage where you have access that's a whole nother ballpark yeah they're um, um where we are like i said i mean i could probably go if i went like 40 minutes away i'd have no problem i just basically drive away from Lake Michigan and the, and the storage costs get cheaper and cheaper. Hmm. Um, there's storage a block away from where my, my pre-war bus is parked right now. That's unbelievably inexpensive, but it's eight hours from me. <laughs> yeah. You know, that doesn't do any good when you want to work on it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, for me, it's, you know, I've done the math. I, I did the math a long time ago. I still think that I can build a, um, I could build a barn on a new piece of land, you know, piece of property that I buy and sell my current shop and, and break even or, or be very close in cost because my my current one is really desirable location. It's got, you know, it's paved. It's got security. There's people who snow plow for you. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's a nicer parcel than having to buy your own piece of land and do all that stuff. So. I, I'm betting that, uh, you know, if I go that route, it'll be okay. Hmm. I know um, one of the scuttlebutts I hear out of airports down in the U.S. is uh, people storing things in hangars that are not necessarily airplane related. In some airports, they have a lot of extra hangars and they don't mind. In other airports, they're busy and they, they'll have nothing to do with it. So um, that... We have, and that's weird here, we've got seven hangars that are for sale. The whole building, if you buy like, there's two different buildings. If you bought a four bay uh, hangar, the whole building, the four bay hangar is a hundred thousand, and they're selling individual bays for like twenty eight. Um, but you can't. I mean, it's not like you can go through security with your bus and drive it onto the property. You know, they're designed for planes, and you know, it it's it's a international airport. They've got security, and I I just I wouldn't even think about that because they want planes parked there. They don't really want, you know what I'm saying? They don't yeah. really want uh, to park my buses in there. I think it depends on the airport and um, the, the size of the airport too. There's a lot of smaller airports out there that have a lot of empty hangars that are sitting derelict. And those types of airports are where you can actually get access airside. You can drive your private vehicle in and get to your hangar. Um, but in general, it, it seems to be a, a problem where more and more people are buying hangars in some areas and just using them to store non-aviation stuff. So a lot of pilots are getting upset about it, and rightfully so. Uh, here, there's plenty of private flyers, so I'm sure that they'll have bona fide people with planes in here. Somebody's asking for my contact info. If you go to vwsage.com, that's like volkswagensage.com, vwsage.com, um, and you go to contact, you can always email me through there. And, uh, you know, and I've got a little contact form you can fill out and we can uh, we can converse that way if you need to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, so they are estimating that my power doesn't get turned on until, uh, I think, 5 o'clock in the morning. Wow. 6 o'clock tomorrow, something like that. So I... Uh, I, this happens probably four or five times a year, and the way the winds were today, I was pretty, uh, you know, I'm pretty surprised. I'm not surprised at all that it, 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 you know, it went out. I do have to stoke my fire a second. Can you? Sure. Can you chat? While I yeah. Get well, at least you've got a fireplace that you can use to keep warm. I'm sure that's part of your oh, yeah. plan, being out where you are. Yeah. It's in the back. You just need to get a good generator in one of your buses, and then you can park your bus in the driveway and backfeed the house. That way, you don't have to worry about it when it goes down. And uh... well, that's what my next door neighbor used to do. He'd bring his RV in and plug it into his house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to get that before it dies, or you're gonna freeze. It's pretty windy and cold here.
So how was Halloween in your way? Did were the kids actually out trick or treating, or did they uh, kibosh it? Actually, uh, it got sort of got canceled. Um, we so out where I live, I live on an island. Generally, people don't. Uh, generally, people. Oh, there's a picture of my butt. <laughs> generally, people don't uh, don't trick or treat here, but they all go downtown Traverse City, and uh, uh, I I happen to be working on uh, the homeless shelter. And drove home through the neighborhoods about the time that trick or treating begins. I saw one group of people. I mean, normally there's thousands of kids. Everybody from the surrounding area. I'm sure, like if you had trick or treating, people would like flock to uh, Stratford. Um, you know, and and that's the same way in Traverse City. And we saw one or two groups of kids, and that's it. Yeah. Usually in our downtown, our pub call. You know, we've got all these microbreweries and wineries and stuff. Usually pub, pub crawling on Halloween is is pretty outrageous. I didn't see anybody. Hmm. That's probably you know? a good thing right so now I, with COVID. Yeah, you know, I'm on the 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 you know, I, I'm on a conference call every week with our health department, and uh, you know, it, it we we're pretty respectful. We're not going to mess around with this. Most of the numbers that happen in our in our area are from people who are out of town. Um, that's, you know, we, we have a lot of visitors who come here and they're, they're a big part of, of that, but, uh, no, it was quiet. I mean, we didn't have, normally you don't have people here. I always get a bag of candy or so just, you know, just to have in case somebody knocks, yeah. but, uh, we didn't have anybody and we didn't see anybody in our neighborhood either. Yeah. Did you guys have a good Halloween or did you even celebrate it up there? Oh yeah. We're not that different. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, your, th- your Thanksgiving's like what tomorrow? No, our, we are. When's Thanksgiving? Our Thanksgiving was uh, uh, last week. Can't even remember. That's the trouble with. So what? What do you guys celebrate? We celebrate basically invading the Indians. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we celebrate. Uh, uh, you know, when we we our country landed here. What does Thanksgiving mean to you guys? Um, it's it's it's. it's probably similar to what your Thanksgiving is. I just don't know why it's on a different date. Um, it's always different. Ours is always a couple of weeks earlier than your Thanksgiving. And uh, it always, it's always confusing. But uh, we had a question. Somebody's asking how our buses start in the cold. Well, I can tell you how my bus starts in the cold because I've started it the last couple of days and it's been pretty cold here. Um, yesterday I started it... Um, above zero close to freezing it did not want to start at all like not even a puff of smoke out of it so i went and grabbed the can of ether give it a shot of ether it fired right up yeah. and then died had to give it a second shot and the second shot it fired right up and stayed running then i remembered that when we were messing with my bus when we were getting it ready i remembered seeing an electrical cord going to a block heater so today i got the block heater out and uh, I followed the cord, made sure the cord was in good shape and that there wasn't anything looked like it was worn through with the wiring. I plugged it in and I could actually hear it um, sizzling almost right away. So I left it for, I don't know, a good two hours and you could feel that there was actually heat in the block. So it was working. And uh, so today I tried to start it without ether with having plugged in for two hours and it almost went, but not quite. Um, so did have to give it a little shot of ether and not much of a shot and it did go right away and almost no smoke whatsoever with the block heater working so um so it did need a little just a little shot of ether it did fire up but ran smooth no smoke yesterday it smoked out the backyard when i did get it to fire so um they do start they do need a bit of help i guess i uh i have not tried to start it if it's below 40 yet um, like I said, it, we're going to have three days in the 60s, mid to high 60s this this week. Yeah. So I'll definitely fire it up. Um, I've been kicking around getting a block heater. I mean, how hard are they to put in? You just put them down near the oil pan, don't you? Or uh, is it pretty involved? Um, mine is on the front of the engine. The super, It's, it's kind of down in the corner behind the blower by the fuel pump. So there must be a port there or a freeze plug or something where you can put it in. Um so 
My my rec- It actually sits inside the. It sits inside the block. It doesn't. It's not just like something that you put on the outside. Right. It actually sits in the coolant and heats the coolant, and it'll uh, through convection just from the heat rising, it'll cause the coolant to start to circulate if you've got a high enough wattage one. So I was able to feel heat all the way up to the valve cover after two hours. So it was definitely working. So, you know, when we lost all that radiator fluid in South Bend, we replaced it with water. I've been thinking that I've got, I've got mostly water in that engine oh, right holy now. Holy jumping. Yeah, that's a good point. You need to go drain that. Um, you need to, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't had any, we've had a few hours in freezing. I mean, we have not had sustained freezing temperatures. Like even today with the snow, it's been 35. Yeah. But that's that's doing when I when I get there this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've got some antifreeze in there, but it's probably pretty diluted because we added, I can't even remember, we must have added five or six gallons of water to it. So you're probably down to about 10%, maybe 20 tops it, of well, antifreeze. It's pretty heavy radiator fluid. Remember, we went a little overkill in the radiator fluid. But this weekend, I'm going to do that. I'm going to drain the uh, drain the radiator and fill it with uh, with you know the blended the right amount, um, and uh, and so that's you know. But a block heater is something. So block heater is kind of a detailed process to install, right? It's not just something fairly easy. Um, I don't think they're that hard to get in. Uh, you just got to locate a, a a place where they're going to go and. As long as it's easy to access and put it in, um, it shouldn't be too hard. I've done them on cars before, and they're relatively painless to, to install. It's just a matter of knocking out a freeze plug and putting the, putting it in place of the freeze plug. But uh, yeah, so your your bus is probably only good to about just slightly below freezing right now with all the dilution. Um, you're gonna probably want to drain five or six gallons out of it and top it up with straight antifreeze. Yeah. No, I know I've got. You know, I know how to do it, and and I that's the plan. Um, I'll use distilled water. You know, I'll I'll do it the way that you're you're supposed to. Um, we only drove it for you know 150, 160 miles with what it's in it right now. But I just thought, man, it's that's something I got to get get to. Yeah, yeah, and you want to make sure you run it till the thermostat opens up all the way and actually goes through to the heater core and everything and f- circulates full system. I, do you think that my system goes all the way to the heater core, or is that? Yeah, pl- I'm pretty sure your heater core valves are open, and I think that's the only thing that was cooling that bus to get us as far as we did in Texas was it was cooling through the heater core. Um, I've got mine; my heater core is all plumbed in and working great now, and it actually heats the bus pretty good. Uh, when we took it for the drive, it uh, we, I don't know we drove it for had it running for maybe two hours and it was it was toasty warm inside i didn't think it was working too well till i went outside then i came back in and boy did it feel nice so uh let's see here it's uh saying we've got zero viewers right now which uh I'm seeing 117 more. okay all right so i think my feed I think the feed that uh, that I'm monitoring is not the same feed that you're you're running off of. Yeah, I think what it, happened was just, the, the the key you sent me was for the old one, and it reopened the old one from last week. But that's really interesting. what that tells me, Jason, is we could set up a Sunday night feed and use the same feed every week. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's strange. Anyway, but, we learn new things every every week. What time we do we have here? My computer is. Uh, I got eight fifty-two. Yeah, my computer's about ready to go to sleep. You know, after the battery goes. Um, but like I said, I am streaming off my computer, um, so that's that's going well. Do we have any questions going on down there? Do you see anything? Yeah. Just reading some stuff here. Um, manuals say don't use pond water. Yeah, don't use ditch water. It's not usually got the best comp- composition. Um, somebody's saying use a bypass block, uh, use a bypass block heater, not a freeze pl- plug type. I think what he's referring to is the ones that go in line in the coolant hoses, maybe. Um, the, that to me those, makes more sense, like a little pump yeah. that circulates. Yeah. That that's well, something that could be easy. There, there there are ones that just work. Most of them work purely on convection. You mount them in the lowest point of the coolant system, and uh, it just works by heat rising, and that creates convection. And if 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 
you have a more complicated system where you can't mount it at the lowest point possible, then you need some kind of a circulation pump to actually circulate the coolant. Okay. Are there anything else on there? I, I'm seeing stuff pop up, but it's it's pretty small. I can't read it from yeah. here. Um, somebody's congratulating us for no echo tonight, which is great. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. We, we had our own problems at the beginning of this. Like, uh, you know, I don't have power right now. If you're just dropping in, my power went out. That's why we had to switch channels. Um, yeah. Is that I was all set to go and, and the wind wasn't cooperating. It knocked my power out. And so the next thing you know, we're, you know, we're streaming off my channel from Jason's uh, place. And that's, I don't know how exactly we did it, but it, however it's working, it's working. And then I'm just, I'm on a, a Skype call with Jason from my cell phone. Yeah. Um, somebody's saying you need to throw another log on your fire. Your fire's going out. Yeah, I got to blow it a little bit, get it going again. I'm not worried. I just heated those logs up and it'll it'll get restarted in a couple minutes. <laughs> throw some gas on the fire. Yeah, that'll work. No. I, no, when you live up here, you learn how to start a fire. I can, I can yeah. get that one back up in just a couple minutes when we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess if we don't have any more, uh, what's Two Feathers saying? Logic is the only thing. I don't know. Read some of those. Yeah. Well, I think that my, uh, my computer just shut down. It won't affect our feed, but I can't read the uh, comments ah, anymore. Okay. Two Feathers was talking about was Bosto um, sells a heater that connects to your coolant system. Yeah, well, Bosto's got some great products that you can get, and uh, they have a full circulating setup you can get that you can actually use for interior heat as well. They're, some of them pr systems are pretty pricey, but they make a great product, and there's there's more and more Chinese clones out there too. Um, I mean, look at those uh, diesel-fired heaters that everybody's using now. You can buy a Chinese clone for, what, 150 bucks. And uh, they seem to work pretty good. Whereas if you buy the real deal, they're probably five times that. Well, I'll tell you, I am definitely going to need heat this winter. Um, I'm going to spend most of my time inside working on inside stuff. And I, you know, I've got a little salamander heater, but uh, I do have a one of those Chinese diesel heaters that I just figure I'll get that installed and run that to heat the the bus. Yeah. Somebody's asking me if that's a real target sign behind me. It is not. <clears throat> it is just a plexiglass one piece. Um, basically a picture of one that's complete printed onto uh, plexiglass. So. Um, oh, somebody was asking what's the final decision. I passed on buying that engine that I was looking at. Um Scott and I talked about it a couple times, and I'm going to just move forward with uh, uh, an in-frame rebuild. So I will, uh, at some point in the spring, um, get my bus out of where it is and, and haul down to him. I, I want to get some heat set up. I want to get my electrical working better, and then I'll, I'll fire it up and get it down to, to his place. Um, you know, I probably won't get it done this between now and then just because COVID's flaring up. Um, it's, I still haven't figured out how I get home from there. So it's yeah. one of those deals where I have to drive down, work with him to get it rebuilt. In other words, dedicate a week or two to being down there working on the bus. And before I do that, I want to make sure I can actually live on the bus while we're working on it. So I've got a little work to do on the inside to get ready for that. Get my mm -hmm. golden toilet I've been looking at, get some heat in there. Um, I, I'm going to get a queen size bed, you know, set up and so once I do that, he's got electricity, so I can run appliances and stuff off of it. But uh, see, there's my fire. It kind of got started on its own. Yeah. So well, your your pre-war is a little closer to being livable than the uh, the Texas bus. It is, oh, it's livable today. Yeah. I mean, I I would need a new mattress because that's a skanky mattress. But um, you know, the bathroom completely works. The kitchen. I ripped the the stove out, but I can put. You know, I can run a two burner, just a regular Coleman propane stove in there. It's got kitchen cabinets. It's got the water. It, everything works right. on that. So, but but that doesn't need engine work. That's actually, I mean, when I look at the list of things I need to do for that one, that one's in much better, uh, you know, much closer to being completely functional than my other one. 
Yeah, that's that's amazing considering it sat for what forty years. I think we yeah, it was in the eighties, some point yeah. thirty thirty five years. There goes your fire. Now it's looking pretty toasty. Yeah, it uh, the the fire decided to kick on, and you can't see it I think in the feed, but uh, you I don't know you you don't have me fully expanded on the. Uh, you know, on the, the YouTube feed, but if you're looking at me through Skype, um, the fire, the fire is doing well. I'm feeling it. So cool. That's good. I'll probably stay down, maybe sleep on the couch down here tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, two feathers saying the Webasto diesel heater is about 1800 retail for a full kit. So, but that includes the, the hot water heater. That's, that's the whole one where it heats your, uh, fuel lines, but it also heats. It's good for your hot water for your for your house system. Yeah, that's that's the full unit. Yeah, looks like. Uh, oh, Dennis is saying Sage eating baked beans because that fire just popped. <laughs> no, <laughs> you might be eating baked beans for no. breakfast tomorrow. Keep that fire going. Put them, put put your baked can of baked beans in the fire. Look, fires are easy. Fire it, wood catches on fire at a certain temperature, and when you put it on red hot coals, it may not light up right away. But give it a little time, and it'll catch. And that's what happened: is it finally sat on those hot coals long enough that it finally caught? And I knew it would. That's why I wasn't too worried about it. Yeah. But uh, you can blow on it, which can sometimes quicken the the speed at which it happens. But uh, yeah. okay, here it crick, cricking. Yeah. When I was a kid, my dad always used to say that there was a bug that crawled into the wood, and when you hear it snap, it's the bug popping inside the wood. It's not exactly what happens, but... Hmm. Well, unless we get any more questions, um, I think it's about time to wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, it's been about an hour. You know, at some point, we're going to get this thing completely figured out, and the power company's going to, you know, make sure I can... <laughs> I can see, and we'll actually do one of these things the right way, but we always manage to pull it off. <laughs> Yeah, and that works. So, what are you doing this week? What are you going to work on? Probably your job. My job, um, but uh, probably won't be any bus stuff this week. Anything bus? Have you ordered anything? You're waiting to come in. Um, no, I'm not waiting on anything right now. The next big project's going to be window gaskets. So, if any of you Silverside owners are looking for window gaskets, get a hold of me this week because I want to get. An order together, and if I can get an idea what everybody needs, then we can uh, th then I can put together a bigger order and hopefully get the cost of shipping down a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you need Silverside window rubbers or door rubbers or anything like that, this week is the time to get a hold of me and uh, get a pre-order done so I can get an idea of how much product to order. Um, because that's the next thing I'm going to be working on. So. so, for the most part this week, I'm going to just fire up my bus, get it running. I'm going to investigate block heaters, um, and I'm going to uh, continue to work on. I've got the electrical schematics. I told you I had a Ford engineer who's helping me. Yeah. Um, we've got the pretty simple, and we've got it pretty well planned out. We're going to run a conduit down one one side, the driver's side. Okay. In the wall. So that we ever have to feed, like we'll have conduit to a couple key places, like behind the kitchen cabinet, there'll be a way to run wire from the front or the back to the kitchen cabinet. Um, and we'll have one other, one other spot behind where the couch is going to sit, there'll be an access panel. So we've got kind of some ideas as to how to design it today, but then design it so we can chase, we can run more leads in the future. Right, yeah. Somebody's asking, what's the hardest project on a vintage bus? Um, <laughs> nothing ain't easy. I think you said it best. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, changing out the engine mount is probably the hardest thing I've done. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, I didn't have to do that on mine. Mine actually looks like it's in remarkable shape. So. Yeah. Richard says getting it. All hard. right. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. So this week, I guess I am working on something this week. I'm going to be working on getting through all my footage i've been kind of tied up with job stuff i meant to get through all my footage this week and get all my i've got a bunch of uh, mechanical videos of stuff I, i've done to date and uh 
that'll be the next thing, actually. All right. Well, cool. Well, I uh, I look forward to talking next week. Hopefully, we'll we'll have some good things to talk about. Yep. And uh, I'm gonna play with my bus. Maybe put my seatbelt on my bus, which would be nice to have seatbelt. And uh, we will uh, have other things to talk about next week. Yep. All right. Well, have a good week, man. Congratulations on your job. Yeah. Thanks. And we'll talk to everybody next week. Have a good week. We'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs>